Okay, so we have this relationship, and what this relationship effectively tells us is that increase, oh sorry, increase in capital worker, which is small k, leads to increase in output worker, which is small y. And that is what you want, right? Uh, when we're talking about growth in an economy, I mean, okay, so if our output is increasing, but at the same time, let's say population is increasing, that may not really represent growth because by growth, what we mean is improvement in standard of living. So if our output doubled, but our population doubled, that's not really an improvement in standard of living. But what we want is an increase in output per worker, which means that the rate at which our output is increasing is higher than the rate at which our population is increasing. So effectively, this is uh, an example over here is how growth can occur in the economy. So that leads us straight to the question Where does growth comes from? So, so far in this semester, we have not talked about growth. I mean, sure, we may have talked about GDP is this much in year one, and then in year two, it's a bit higher, and then year three, it's even higher. So that's an example of growth. But where does this growth come from? How does a country uh, suppose you're the government of a country and you want to increase the growth rate, how would you go about doing that? What would have to change? So what we can see from this diagram is that growth comes from two places. Okay? Only two places. One, growth comes from capital accumulation. As we accumulate more and more capital, which would lead to an increase in capital per worker, small k, this diagram shows us that there is going to be an increase in output per worker, which is growth effectively. And the second place where we can get growth from is technological progress. Now, what does that mean? What is technological progress? So that's pretty straightforward. At this stage, given a fixed level of technology, we can produce this much. Okay. At this level of capital accumulation, let me call this K1, K2. So this is Y1. And we have this much. When we have technological progress, and we're not going to get very technical in this chapter, we will do a bit more technical analysis later on. But in this chapter, in simple terms, when there is technological progress, all that is happening is that at the same level of capital accumulation, we are going to be able to produce more output. So as I said, in our simplified example, the only capital in the economy was laptop. And suppose we have a situation where K is 0 0.4. So 40% of the people in the economy has laptops. And as a result, we can produce a certain level of output. Technological progress is going to allow us 
to improve our output at the same level of capital with the same number of laptops. And what that is going to look like is this. So see what has happened. At this level of K, now we can produce this much. At this level of K, we can now produce this much. And so we're going to call this. This is an example of technological progress. As, and of course, this has led to growth. So from Y1, we've gone up to Y3. From Y2, we've gone up to this level. Whatever this is, let's call it Y4. And so this is also growth, right? So at the same level of capital, if nothing has happened to capital per worker, but because there has been technological progress, a technological breakthrough, what we are doing now is producing more. Our output per worker has gone up. So these are the two ways in which we get growth, either by accumulating more capital or through technological progress. Okay. So this is the end of chapter 10, end of first lecture. Here is what I'm going to request you guys to do before going through the next set of lectures. So first of all, read the book. Okay, so read, uh, not chapter, read section 10 four from the book. This is an absolute necessary. Once you've read this section, after that, what I'm going to request, this is optional, but what I'm going to request you guys is to read the entire chapter again, okay? You don't have to do it very carefully. You're not preparing for an exam. The entire chapter is not part of our syllabus, but after reading section 10.4, if you read the entire chapter, what's come bef coming before 10.4 and what's after 10.4, you're going to have a better idea of exactly what we are talking about. So please do that. And once you've done that, you will be more or less ready to get into chapter 11, which is where we start the real analysis. So if you notice, all we've done so far is set things up. We've introduced a technology, and then we've taken that technology, and we've converted that into the per worker terms divided by n, it's the second thing we've done. Having done that, we've established that decreasing returns to scale is a realistic scenario. And once we've decided that decreasing returns to scale is the way to go, we've been able to draw a diagram, a capital output diagram. That's the third thing we've done. And once we've been able to draw the diagram, the final thing, the fourth thing we've done is talked about the sources of growth. Where does growth come from? And we see that growth comes from two different places. One is capital accumulation, and the other is technological progress. Now we're going to talk about this too a lot more in chapter 11, and we're also going to introduce a few more things. So before moving on to the next lecture, Please read at least 10.4 and preferably the entire chapter 10.4.